and you're in the right place to receive something great from God. Amen? Hallelujah. Pastor Russell, come on. So great to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We love you dearly, my friend. Besides that, old guys rock. I told Michael he better stay in shape. He's got to be ready to run as hard as his dad. Amen. Our rocking is kind of, you know, it's all relative. It's maybe more roll than rock, I'm thinking. <laughs> maybe. I was just thinking of a couple of funny lady jokes. Because it's Father's Day, right? So one lady said, men, you can't live with them, and you can't live with them. <laughs> Uh, that's not right. Another one said, another one said, they put one man on the moon. Why not put them all? <laughs> We'd be okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a joy to be with you. And again, just to thank you for your support over the years and just to uh, the school that you specifically gave an extra amount, just to let you know that's going perfectly. The building's all finished, and the land was able to be secured in Burma, in uh, Yangon City. And we're now training hundreds of Burmese in Yangon because of the ability to have that perfect place. So God bless you. Uh, just a little update on the work that we're doing. Yes, uh, um, it's perfect and continues to grow. We are now, with our training schools, we're touching over 30 nations in the world. And that looks like China. It looks like Mongolia. Since I was with you last time, we've begun to work in Mongolia and another work in Vietnam. So we have China, Mongolia, Vietnam, which touches Laos and Cambodia. 300 churches, the guys we're working with, already planted underground, most of them, because it's very much a communist country, of course. 300 churches, great people. And just, uh, you know, in adversity, just doing the work of God. And how many know God is bigger? Praise the Lord. Uh, and he doesn't care about politics. Amen? Brother, he doesn't care about politics. Then we're working in Burma, and then we're working in India, touching Nepal, Bhutan, East India, and, and in the Indian continent itself. We have an orphanage in Orissa, and we will be starting a school in Orissa, Odisha, uh, this year. So that'll be another school that we have. Then we're in Pakistan, which is wonderful. And we are in uh, Burundi, Africa, and we touch the nine nations around Burundi, DRC, Congo, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, all those nations, South Sudan, we bring the leaders in to Burundi and we have a great training center there with them. I'll be there next month and Pakistan. And then we've just begun working over the last four or five years into Eastern Europe, which was always a burden. And so in Albania, Macedonia, Kosovo, I'm just coming from there now and across to you here. Uh, so then we will be working into Greece next year and so forth. So these are wonderful, wonderful opportunities just to train God's people to reach their own people. You know, uh, this is the way of mission now. It's, we don't go and do mission so much, but we train their people to reach their own nations and just release them into the nation. So it's a wonderful thing, and God continues to increase it and enlarge it. So I'm guessing he must be happy with it. Amen. You know, God has plenty of opportunities to shut things down, but God is increasing and enlarging. So we, we're blessed. We also have a big ministry in New Zealand. It continues to grow and grow and grow. And so when I'm not traveling, I'm at home overseeing that work there. So six months of the year I'm traveling, six months of the year I'm at home, and that's just the way it is. Praise the Lord. So Michael is here, my oldest son, uh, which is a wonderful joy, and he is a wonderful joy. 
And I was just sharing with her, I often share his story because, you know, we are the product of our choices. God's will is God's will, and God's will wants the best for everybody. But not everybody wants God's will, you know. It's, you've got a will to have God's will, you know. Uh, just like God wants to be everyone's God, but he's not everyone's God. He's only the God of those who want him to be God, you know. Other people choose other gods. Well, knock yourself out, you know. But when Michael was 16 years old, as a young man growing, the Lord really got a hold of his heart. All our young boys, we have four sons, their mother just, in, just sowed into their life. She unfortunately passed away. <laughs> But these boys are the product of her sowing and sowing and sowing. I want to tell you, if you're a mother today, just love your kids and sow into them. Teach them the ways of God. Teach them to pray and to worship and to read the word. And she just said, I'm going to have four men of God. And she set her life to that, you yeah. know. And so we are blessed to have these four amazing young men. But Michael at 16, I think it's around 16, he said to himself, I have four brothers and I need to be a good example to them. And not only did he set himself to serve God, but he set himself to be an example to his brothers, you know. And so he's a product of that. And so he's the forerunner for this young men that have come behind him. And they're all wonderful young men of God, serving God in the way that they have God has intended for their lives. Some in secular work, some in business, but they all have ministry hearts and pastoral hearts and prophet hearts and evangelist hearts as they go about their daily life, but wonderful young <laughs> men of God. So they're all doing very well. God bless you. And we now have 11 grandchildren, which means that I'm a very busy man. You know that. <laughs> Actually, I sometimes forget their names. I have no idea when their birthdays are. <laughs> I'm probably the worst grandfather in the world. But I, but I do love them all dearly and, you know, wish them all the best. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I pray for them. Father, forgive them. <laughs> Cover them. Watch over them. And then I get a little WhatsApp or a little message say, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday today. So, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Papa remembers it's your birthday. Happy birthday, you know. <laughs> so, you know. But you can't know everything, you know. Can't remember everything. Praise the Lord. Good to be together. And uh, just being among God's people. And uh, to meet you, my brother and sister. Can we pray for you? <laughs> it's not easy living in these countries, you know. It's not easy doing the work. These men and women are incredibly faithful, incredibly committed, beyond anything that we in the West can understand, really. You know, I spend many, many months, and I've been to India many, many times, and and it's sacrificial, you know. And I'm not diminishing us in the West. But when we talk sacrificial, it's sacrificial. That means you give everything. You have nothing. And if you have something, you give it. Because you want for the others. And this is how they live. And your support of them is life for them. It's there. It enables them to do. But I promise you, every cent you give them, they'll be giving some of it to somebody else. You know, they, 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 these people are not taking it for themselves. This is perfect. Father, in the name of Jesus, your sons and your daughters are here. And Father, they said, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And Father, they're here for a short season to be refreshed and just to have some time. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that by your Spirit you will fill them afresh and encourage and strengthen yes. them, O oh God. Yes. That, Father, they will know that you are with them. You are their God. You will never forsake them. You will never leave them. Even as they go into the difficult places, Father, you are there before them, preparing and making a way, O oh God, and you will keep them safe. And nothing will ever harm them 
them, O oh God, because they're with you and you are with them, O oh God. And this is not them, but it's you with them. And it's together, Father, you are working with your people. And you see everything. You see everything. You see every sacrifice that the mother has made, every sacrifice that the father has made, every sacrifice that the minister has made. Everything, O oh God, you know it all. You've seen it all. And you will repay. You will repay. Nothing is for nothing with God in Jesus' name. Your work is not in vain. God knows. Hallelujah. And even in the times when it may seem to be there's not a lot of fruit coming and not a lot of things happening, you can know that your God is there and he is honoring your faithfulness and he will always honor your faithfulness because he is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Lord, bless your servants. Bless them, Father. Heal, restore, refresh. And when they return home, let them return, Father, with a new passion and a new vision of God. In the name of Jesus. It's not long to go. Let us continue together to the end. Hallelujah. It's not long to go. Let's carry it through to the finish. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see it through. It's not long to go now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's hard work. But we're going to get the job done. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Jesus is coming back. I want to talk to you about Jesus coming back because this is what's my burden these days. Because I'm concerned that many Christians think like this. Well, I go to church on Sunday, sing a couple of songs and pay my money. One day I'm going to die and I'll go to heaven. Hallelujah. That's what they think. That's what they think Christianity is about. If I just do these things, maybe, maybe when I die, I'll go to heaven. But that's not why Jesus came. Jesus came to open the door for whoever wants to be a man and a woman of God and live forever with him. Starting right now, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. That we would live with the glorious hope of eternal life and the absolute assurance that Jesus is coming back for us, hallelujah. And that this is not our world any longer. We have another world to look for, praise the Lord. But I'm concerned that for many people, they have gotten born again, but they've become distracted. And they've begun to sow their seed into the earth again, and to sow their, their hopes into the earth again, and look to man rather than looking to God. And they're not expecting Jesus to return. In fact, many people are creating all kinds of doctrines that Jesus isn't returning, or he's already returned, or all kinds of things. But this is not true. Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon. And you and I, with the Spirit of God in us, should be knowing it's time to begin to prepare for the return of Jesus. And I want to provoke that. I want to stimulate that this morning again, as I'm doing all around the world. It's time for God's people to turn their hearts toward home. Hallelujah. And turn away from the distractions that might keep us in, the, in our hopes in this world, but that our hope is in God and it's in heaven. It's in our eternal life. Hallelujah. So I just want to walk through that a little bit with you this morning and just see where the Lord takes it. But if we just go to John chapter 14, we see Jesus was very clear, and the scriptures are full of these things. I'm just selecting some scriptures to confirm it again. But you know, the greatest issue that's going to be uh, against the church in these last days is going to be deception. When you look at the final chapters of the books of Peter, Peter and John, John and John, you'll see they're warning continually against deception. Lying voices, false prophets, false apostles, false teachers. What are these people going to be doing? They're going to be teaching lies to try to distract from the people of God the truth of what God is really doing and trying to get us away from the excitement of Jesus coming back. 
Well, we need to know that by the Spirit of God, He is speaking to us the truth. Hallelujah. And the truth is, Jesus is coming back, and He's coming back soon, and it's time to begin to prepare. Hallelujah. For the return of Jesus. Let's look at the Word of God. John chapter 14. We're reading verses just 1 through 4. Familiar scriptures, but the scriptures can be familiar to everybody, but they don't, have, they don't mean anything to anybody. We can read these things over and over, but it's like a fairy tale or a storybook, but it's not. This is life and death. This is the promise of God, and this is our destiny. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you will be also. And where I go, you will know in the way you will know. Hallelujah. Jesus came the first time to prepare a people for his second time. That's why he came. Jesus came the first time to prepare a people for his second time. He came to make a way for us all to become the children of God and live with God forever. That was the whole purpose. It wasn't to create a nice life here. This was never God's purpose. Jesus didn't come into the earth so that we could have a nice life in the earth. He came to the earth that we might go to heaven, hallelujah, and spend our life with him. In heaven. Of course, when we're born again, we enter into the promise of God. And God's promise is blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. And all of our families and homes and businesses should be blessed. But they're not blessed for us. They're blessed as a testimony for the world to see this is what our God does. But it's not for here. We're blessed here as a testimony but the purpose of God is that we go to be with him forever. Not here. Amen. Are you okay? It's not here. And how do we get from here to there? Jesus is coming back. And the scriptures are clear. It, I cannot understand how people come up with all these other crazy ideas. Jesus is coming back. He's right now preparing our place. You're ministering to slum people. We minister to slum people. Recently, I was talking to some Rohingya refugees. Now, you know these people. They've just been expelled largely from Myanmar. They're living in squalor. And I had the privilege of going and ministering among them for a few days. But to show them that their God has prepared a place for them. The living God. Not their crazy God, but the living God. Their crazy God put them here, but the living God wants to take them somewhere else. Hallelujah. And if they will believe in him through Jesus Christ, then this is the promise of God for their life. No slums in heaven. No refugee camps in heaven. Just a glorious life forever in Jesus' name. And it doesn't matter where you live today. It only matters where you're going to live tomorrow. Hallelujah. And what a great privilege it is to be able to talk to people about these promises. But listen to me. We are in the West. This is our promise too. You may think you live in a palace today. But your palace is nothing. It's nothing. It's just a home. God has another home, an eternal home. Whatever's here is temporary. Whatever God has, God is eternal. So wherever you live today, it doesn't matter if you live in a tent or live in a palace, it's all going to go. And you need to have your heart preparing for the return of Jesus. That's what it's about. We know the story of the children of Israel coming back from Babylon. God wanted to restore them in Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, rebuild. But most of them stayed in Babylon. Why? Because they were married into the system. They put their roots back into the world. They were content there. 
And this is a big concern for God's people. The only reason that we create these other doctrines about the fact that we're not going out, there's nothing coming, Jesus is. The only reason we create these doctrines is because we're quite happy here, thank you very much. They don't want to go. Well, I say, knock yourself out. Stay. But I'm not staying. Are you staying, brother? We're going home, pal. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing and dance and worship the Lord. And we're going to enter into his glory forever in Jesus' name. And we're going to rejoice in the Lord always. Praise the Lord. We're going to get up every day. I don't know how it's going to work, but we're going to enjoy it anyway. Amen. Amen. We kind of can't conceive some of it. But I love telling these people, and you understand what I'm talking about, and others of you, 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 you know, but I love to tell these people, there's no more crying here. I am sick and tired of watching television, seeing mothers weeping over their dead children. Some evil fool takes it in his own hands to consider that he can pass some kind of evil act upon people and have the right to do it. It's the evil world. I'm sick of it. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. The only reason the Lord's not come back now is because he said he's not coming back yet. He's coming soon. God looks at this. He hates it too. I tell you that. He hates it. But he's committed himself to a time. And he's coming. And we need to hate it. And we need to get ready. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. No more crying. No more pain. No more suffering. Hallelujah. What good news we have. What good news we have. And we need to go tell everybody about it. And listen to me. The door is open. Amen. The door is open. Everyone's welcome. I was talking on Easter weekend one time in, I think it was in Albania, but I was just teaching on, it was Easter Sunday. And I just had this vision of the Lord on the cross. And I said to them, this is the picture I have. The Father opens his arms and invites the whole world to join him. Hallelujah. This day was the most significant day in all history. This day, the day when Jesus went to that cross and died, God opened his arms and invited the whole world to join him in heaven forever. Hallelujah. And the door is still open. It's not too late, but time is running. Hallelujah. Oh, just come with me to Peter. Second Peter, I think. I was telling them these little notes I have. They've got scribbles all over them. I can hardly follow them myself. So we're, we're on a journey together. Praise the Lord. Second Peter. I'm just drawing your attention to the fact that the Lord is coming back. And I want to get your heads and hearts toward heaven again. Time is running. We can't keep pushing back the end day. We can't keep pushing it back. The end must come. When you run a race, and some of you run races, you run this race, you run into a tape, right? <laughs> they don't keep moving it away. <laughs> oh, nearly there. Well, oh. <laughs> they don't keep moving the end tape away. It's got a beginning and an end. And this part of humanity began at the cross and it ends at the return of Jesus for us. Amen. That's the tape. That's the line. That's the, that's the crossing point, the end of the race. Hallelujah. And this is where our eyes must be set now because the end of the race is coming. It's not far away. If we just look at history, we can say it's not far away. It's 2019 for crying out loud. Amen? Isn't it? I heard somebody, some high and mighty person. You know, there's some people that are like that. They think they're high and mighty. 
they were teaching all the people. Don't worry, Jesus is not coming back for a hundred years at least. I said to myself, you liar. And I began to think about the five foolish virgins. They said that. Don't worry, plenty of time. But there's not plenty of time. And when Jesus comes back, that will be the end of the race. And you and I need to be ready for it. And I'm coming just to turn your hearts toward the finish line. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3, we're reading verse 10. I just want to read and catch some thoughts through here. Because you will find that the entire New Testament is all about preparing for Jesus coming back. Over and over and over and over again, the references to that day, the Lord's day, that great day, always. And what is that day? It's the day the Lord comes back. Everything is pointing to that day. But we are getting distracted here and there and all over the place, and we tend to forget, and we, we just live this religious Christian life without the sense and the urgency of this perfect promise of God, which is Jesus is coming back. Listen to the word of God. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with a fervent heat. And both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So that's a pretty good uh, reason why we shouldn't be investing here, right? <laughs> it's just a thought. <laughs> And that it's coming as a thief in the night doesn't mean that Jesus is a thief. It just means it's coming in his time, not your time, and we need to get ready for it. The Bible says the only person who has to worry about the thief is the person who's not ready. But we are not the people of the dark. We're the people of the day. We're awake. We're alert. We know. And we're ready. Come, Lord Jesus. We're ready for you. And today I want to just, just begin to get your heart back into that mode again. So that we're thinking about this. Hallelujah. And the excitement is in our heart. Jesus is coming back and we're going out of here and we're going to live forever with him. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness? We're just reminded that this church that Jesus is building, preparing for his return, is a glorious church. Amen. Without spot or blemish. Now, that's not a problem for us. Don't These are not pressure things because the bride is always perfect amen the bride is always perfect the bride always gets herself ready and so these are not things about all you better hurry up and get ready well if you're the bride you know that right you're not thinking oh my goodness when's my wedding (laughs) You know very well when your wedding is, and you're planning the whole thing through. Amen? It's just not going to take you by surprise. But it will take you by surprise if you're not a bride, and you're not aware of who you are, and you're not aware of what's happening. And so we've got to get back into this. I am a child of God, and Jesus is coming back for me. I'm not of this world. I'm of another world. Hallelujah. I'm the bride. I need to get ready. And it's going to be perfect. Father, I'm getting ready. Praise the Lord. So what sort of person should we be in holy conduct and godliness? Well, we need to be men and women of God. Hallelujah. Listen to the word of God. Looking, this is what I'm telling you, the whole New Testament is full of these things. Looking for... And hastening the coming of the day of God. What day is that? Jesus coming back. This is what is in our mind, our heart. This is what's before us. We're looking up. Hallelujah. We're not looking over here. Oh, what's going to happen? No, no. We're looking up. Hallelujah. We're looking up. Our heart is in heaven. And we're looking for the coming of the Lord. Are you okay? So in all of our days and all of our life and everything that we're doing in our work, we're looking up, hallelujah, for the coming of the Lord. 
because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with a fervent heat. 13, nevertheless we, listen to the words, according to his promise, are looking for a new heaven and a new earth, hallelujah, in which righteousness dwells. That's where we are going. We are sick of this place. We're in it, we're the hope of it, we're the light of it, but this is not our home. We've got to hate it, we've got to hate it, and I hope you do. You say hate's a strong word, sure, but hate's a good word. We hate evil. We hate evil. I was telling the kids the other night in a service we had, this world is full of stupid people doing stupid things. And you don't have to look at the world and say, oh, wait, is it all right or not? No, it's not. It's stupid. 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 Dumb. And do you know why they're stupid? Because they forsook God. And God said you will be stupid. And he's going to make them even more stupid. So that those who are seeking God will know what's right and wrong. Because it's in your heart. Right and wrong is in your heart. If you want stupid, go for stupid. You've got a very good choices today. You can be as stupid as you want to be. But if you have a heart for God, then God's way is also here. And it is right. Hallelujah. And you can choose it and live it and prepare for Jesus coming back. Because when he comes back, all the stupid is going to get one big boof. Hallelujah. And the stupid people will go with it. Amen. Come on. Oh, you shouldn't talk like that. Pastor. Where's your compassion? I got plenty of compassion. Come to Jesus. Break your heart before God. That's where compassion is. That's where grace is. Not out there. You're stupid, you get the fruit of stupid. But if you want God, you get the fruit of grace. Hallelujah. And mercy in Jesus' name. But it's not out there, it's here. Hallelujah. And this morning, just by the by, if you're here, and this is resonating in your heart, and you've had, I was going to say, a guts fall. Is that a good thing to say? Yeah. If you've had enough, let's just say enough. Okay. If you've had enough of this world, you are dead right. Because your new world starts right here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. For me, 50 years ago, this new world started. And it gets better and better, and I can't wait for heaven. I just can't wait for this life that God has prepared for us forever with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, which is in our heart, look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, let me just pick a couple of words out of here. Therefore, beloved, verse 14, looking forward to these things, be diligent. Be diligent. That means get your focus. Get your aim. Bring it all in. Correct yourself. Readdress the direction of your life. Be diligent. And then later on in verse 17, I'm just picking these words. Therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall away from your own steadfastness. So this word diligent, this word steadfast, these are the words we have to bring back in again. We're not just wandering aimlessly, hoping something good is going to happen. That's not Christianity. That's part of the worldly system. Christianity is a distinct, divine direction and appointment that can never fail, and we are committed to it. Hallelujah. 
And I'm calling you back this morning. Just come on in. Here we're going. We're going to be diligent. We know where we're going. Jesus is coming back. We're looking forward to it. Hallelujah. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. We're ready. We're preparing ourselves. Hallelujah. The bride is getting ready. Why? Because we know the wedding day is coming. Hallelujah. We're not going to be left in the, among the foolish. We're going to be left among the wise. Hallelujah. And preparing ourselves. We're ready, Lord. When you're ready, we're ready. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Be diligent. Be steadfast. And then and grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. So we're just building us in to this preparation for the return of Jesus. And when he comes, we'll know him because we will be like him. Hallelujah. This perfect church, this perfect company of people. And I'm going to tell it to you. You may not like it, but I'm going to talk about it's going to be a remnant. Some people don't think like that, but I do. It's always been a remnant. And it'll be a remnant. But we can be part of the remnant. Hallelujah. Amen. We can be part of it. Because today is the day. Hallelujah. Let me quickly give you, and as I gave the, the team this morning, let me quickly give you three things that God's going to be doing just as he prepares you. Three things that God is doing to prepare his church for his return. The first thing is he's going to teach us, teach us the word of God. And God has put teachers into his body. Listen to these things, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. I'm just going to quickly give you three things that we need to be aware of. This is our spiritual life. This is our daily living with God. So 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, why did I say that one? Well, there's many others we could use. But the emphasis is on learning. Learning. James talks about the spirit of meekness. What is that? It's, the, it's a desire to learn. We're all growing up. We're coming to maturity. We're coming to perfection. How are we going to do it? Because we're going to change. We're going to learn. We're going to adjust. We're going to become ready. Hallelujah. We talk about some people think they know everything. These people are a pain in the neck. <laughs> some people just argue with God. Have you seen those people? It's like church is a debating chamber. They just argue. They don't, oh, well, it's, yeah, well, but that's not what I believe. We have people who whinge and groan and pain in the neck. I figured something out, Pastor. Heaven is a, a, eternal life is a long time. Yeah. I figured that out. <laughs> then I figured this out. I'm not spending eternal life with those people. <laughs> I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it. Can you imagine forever? Oh, here comes that guy. Oh. Forever. Every day forever. This guy's coming. Oh. It's not going to happen. Amen. If I teach about friendship with God, I'll tell you who Jesus is coming back for. He's coming back for his friends. Hallelujah. He's coming back for his friends. Not the politicians. Not the debaters. Not the smart Alex. Not the hard hearts. But the friends of God. Hallelujah. I'm a friend of God. Because I want to be a friend of God. And you need to decide, I'm going to be a friend of God. And I'm going to live a life that makes him happy. Hallelujah. So we're going to learn things. We're going to be taught things. God puts teachers among us to learn. And he is teaching us by his spirit. The second way is by revelation. As we walk with God, God is just going to, to give us understanding. 2 Corinthians, you know, 3 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. That, listen to it. But we are all with unveiled face, uh, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just by the Spirit 
of the Lord. And you all know, and I know you will have experienced it, and I have certainly experienced it, just as we walk with God. God drops things into our spirit. And we're changed. If you have a charismatic speaker, and there are plenty of those around, they're clever with words. And I see many people go and listen to charismatic people, and they all get excited. But tomorrow, they're the same as they were before they started. But when you are hit by Christ, uh, you are changed forever. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't need charismatic. You need Christ. And when he touches your heart and he shows you something, you are changed forever. You are never, ever the same again. And so we're going to learn from the teachers, and we all have good teachers. They teach us things, and the Holy Spirit confirms what's right or wrong. Remember, he's the main teacher. Amen. But we are taught as we walk with God. Most of the things I ever learned is from walking with God. Fifty years I walk with God. God's getting quite old now, isn't he? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Walk with God and God shows you things. Hallelujah. Yeah. And these are life-changing encounters, divine encounters with God that you are never the same again. They're perfect. So he is changing us. So the first way we're learning is by instruction. The second way we're learning is by revelation. And the third way we're learning is from experience. Yeah. We all make mistakes. But God, who is faithful. How you doing, son? <laughs> Ow, that hurt. Sure. Don't do it again. <laughs> we learn from experience. The Bible teaches us that God will use the rod of men to train us. So when we make mistakes and things start going wrong, we don't just work harder at it. We say, Father, what's happening? He said, well, you made this wrong. Don't do it. Okay. And many people have lost everything making mistakes, but they gain everything because God corrects them. You understand? I've made many mistakes, but I have a heart for God, and I'm a son of God. And when I make a mistake, I listen. And I say, I'm sorry. Sorry, Lord. Bible says, before I, went, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, I am learning your word. Amen. Your word is strengthening my life. So we're all going to make mistakes. But we learn from mistakes. And this is a perfect way. God does never forsake his people, but God will correct his people because he loves us and he's preparing us for his return. And so when things start going wrong, don't start screaming at God. Just inquire, Father, is there something we need to talk about? <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Amen. And we learn the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God is going to get us home if we'll just keep our heart with him. Hallelujah. And he's going to get us home by teaching us. He's going to get us home by re revealing himself to us. And he's going to get us home by correcting us when we make mistakes. And all these are good because God is all working everything for good for those who love him. Hallelujah. 
and are the called according to his purpose. So this morning, in the name of Jesus, I'm turning your heart toward home. It's time to begin to prepare for the wedding. The day is coming. I wonder if you wouldn't mind. Are you okay with that? Let's stand to our feet. I just want us to make a commitment to that journey. Are you okay? We've got a few minutes. We've got to commit ourselves. God's heart is perfect. But we need to commit ourselves. People say, well, if God wills me to do it, I'll do it. No, you won't. You need to will to do it. You're in charge of your life, not God. Amen? You're in charge. You make the choices. God knows what he wants, but you have to make the choices. I'm where I am today because I made choices. And when I made wrong choices, I corrected them. But I walk with God every day, every morning. Good morning, Father. This is our time. The peace of God fills my heart. We walk as the closest friends. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hallelujah. That's your God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He'll always be bringing you back into the center of the way. But we have to be committed to it. Don't fight Him. God is good. He is good. He is good. And His goodness endures forever. Father, this morning, again, we're just catching your heart for the day in which we live. This is not just any day. These are days of preparation. We feel in our heart you're coming soon. We see in the history and in in the way of the world, you're coming soon. And you know, Lord, we don't say these things just glibly or as an idea. We say it because we believe it. Time is running. This morning, we realize we are the bride. It's time to start getting ready. And so we commit ourselves individually to begin to prepare for the return of Jesus. We turn our heart toward home. For every one of us, that can be a different thing. I don't know where your heart is. You know. For some, it'll just be an excited...